Hey everyone, this is Alicia Costanzo and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my 23 before 2023 list. Got my little cheat sheet here. Let's get into book number one. So the first book is Thirst by M.T. Anderson. So this is a young teen turning into a vampire and this town is in the middle of a ritual to keep like the big bad vampire lord at bay. So there's satire, there's angst, and this is an author of one of my favorite books of all time which is Feed, which I used to teach in college. So I'm really looking forward to this book. Book number two is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Uh, so two teen boys find out that they're going to die by the end of the day and they want a new friend to do all the things to do all the things with. Bonus, and there's an app for that. So this sounds like a really cool concept. Mostly I want to read an Adam Silvera because I read a previous book of his that was co-written with somebody else and I was eh about it so I wanted to see if I still liked either of the authors on their own. So we're going to give this a try. Book number three is Uncommon Type and I thought this was a memoir. I would have known in my TBR for January that this wasn't a memoir if I had done my research for this video then. But this is a series of a collection of short stories by Tom Hanks. I'm still excited. I have no idea what any of them about, just that uh, Tom Hanks wrote them, so we're gonna give them, we're gonna give them a try. Book four is The Gollum and the Genie. This is by Helen Wecker, I think. You're gonna hear me mispronounce a whole lot of names, I'm sure. So an adventure with a Gollum and a Genie, who are friends. It has magic and history, and it sounds like something exciting to learn about. I love learning about different countries through their fiction, so there you are. Book number five. Oh, how am I gonna keep track of these? Okay. Book number five is The Wizard Hunters by Martha Wells. So this is dark, mysterious war, ineffective wizards, and a child's plaything is the key to winning it. Yeah. Number six, The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. They share a flat. They're there at opposite times. There's a romance that blooms. This is very, or was very popular, I think, last year on BookTube. So... I enjoy the previous book I read by Beth O'Leary, and so I'm gonna give her another try. Book seven is Husband Material by Alexis Hall. This is book two after Boyfriend Material, which features two very dysfunctional people figuring out how to have a relationship together, so I guess now they're gonna figure out how to get married. Book eight is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I do not know how to pronounce that. This is a classic where a new wife enters the house, you know, a new bride, believing that the old one is dead, but I'm pretty sure the old one's in the attic. Like, haunted crazy something, I think. We'll, we'll see. Number nine is The Cerulean Crow by Colleen Gleason. This is book four in the Stalker and Home series. The girls are working for the queen, and they're gonna go on another adventure. This is steampunk history, obviously, Stoker and Holmes. So, yes, bring on the vampires, bring on the fae, bring on the intelligence and the quirky instruments they use to defeat people. Really liked it so far. Book number 10 is Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir, I think is how you say the name. Sorry, honey, if it's wrong. This is a brutal empire like that of ancient Rome, which creates spies and rebels. And so what happens when a spy and a rebel kind of find each other working on the same side? seems interesting. Book 11 is the seven and a half, seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Spy Stuart Tur Turton? Turton? Groundhog's Day via a Ball's Murder Mystery. Book 12, Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Sci-fi adventure where our main characters are barely talking to each other but must escape together in like a pod thing. Sounds cool. I also know that this is multiple formatting kind of thing, so I'm gonna listen to it and probably read it at the same time because I know there are extras, like there are visual extras for this book. 13, A Terrible Fall of Angels by Laurel K. Hamilton. It's been a long time since I've read a Laurel K. Hamilton book. And this is a detective that can communicate with angels. Sounds cool. Number 14, Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. So. What I know about this, kids are abused and kept in the attic. And I know some other things too that I really want to talk about yet. I'm trying to get some of the like books I normally wouldn't read, so classics, contemporaries, that kind of thing, on this list. We'll actually read them. This is one of them. Book 15, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. A band of friends are being tracked by an entity bent on revenge. And I know there's like cultural and traditional aspects of being native and that kind of thing that influenced this, which sounds really cool. Book 16. 
16. It's gonna have to wait for a second. Okay, so book 16 is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury, another kind of classic key book. So a carnival rolls into town, entrapping two boys in the stuff of nightmares. And knowing Ray Bradbury, I'm gonna fucking love it because I've loved everything he's written so far. Book 17, The Heart Goes Last by Margaret Atwood. Are you seeing kind of a theme here, the kind of authors I like to read from? I actually did a paper in my MFA program focusing on Margaret Atwood, so I'm hoping I really, really enjoy this. I enjoyed all of her short stories. This is a married couple, suffer amongst an economic and social collapse, that sounds familiar. Finding a project that gives them the option of living six months in a nicely furnished home and a job, but the alternative six months they have to work in a, as prisoners in the prison system. So functioning as inmates, this sounds fucking fantastic and I cannot wait. Okay, 18. How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh as a memoir or a definitive guide to being a boss. Number 19 is Happy Place by Emily Henry because Emily Henry is one of my favorite authors. A couple broke up, they haven't told their friends, and they must pretend to still be together on their yearly getaway. Number 20 is The Crown by Kira Cass. This is the last in the selection series, book number five, where the original couple's daughter must pick her husband in the same fashion as her parents did. Number 20 is Portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore, book three in a legendary, or in A League of Extraordinary Women. Silly artist and a daughter of a businessman must marry her rival. That's what I understand from this. I'm at currently reading book one. I've already read book two. Don't ask questions, it's, it's weird. I do that sometimes. Book 21, oh, wait, did I forget one? I'm off by a number. I don't know where that happened. However, I'm on book 22, and the last one was book 21. We'll figure this out. I'll put numbers up or something, and now you know why. House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This is a lonely girl, lives in a manor by the sea. Four of her sisters or girls that live there have died. It's not really clear. Um, and she believes that they, were, that they were not accidents, so sounds fun. And number 23 is The Three Body Problem by Six and Lou, I think is how you say the name. Again, do not trust me on that. I don't look these things up. A secret military project tries to contact aliens. That contact brings a failing alien society to invade Earth. And we're, there's like whew, different factions that are trying to help the aliens and trying to fight the aliens. And uh, you know, it sounds interesting. I also have a 24th bonus one, which is not technically on my list, but I'm gonna list it anyways. And this is Shatter Me by Tahera Mafi. Again, with the names that I, I didn't look up. Uh, a woman has the power to kill with her touch, which, which makes her lonely, and then she meets somebody she really cares about, or sees him again, or something. So she's gonna have to figure out how to touch him without killing him. Very much, oh my God, what was her name? Very much X-Men vibes, and I'll put her up on the screen. Was it Rogue? I don't know. Anyways, those are my 23 books I am going to read this year before 2023 is over. I'm going to do it. Last year I missed two. One I got halfway through and the other one was no longer listed in my library, so I didn't have access to it. It's the only reason I didn't get through that one. The other one was a 27-hour book, and uh, it was an epic, and I didn't realize that it was an epic, and yeah, I don't know if you know me, but I don't like epics. So it was hard to get through. I'm halfway through it. I might go back and try to finish it at some point. Now is not the time. So wish me luck with my 2023 list. Please let me know what you plan on reading in 2023 in the comments below. I would love, love to hear about the books you're reading or the books you plan to read, about your life, about anything really you want to tell me. I've got I've been told I have one of those spaces, so tell me anything, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.